There's an old summertime legend on the coast of California. It's about an ancient treasure that's called the idol of the innermost limits of pure fun. Now it's been said that those who seek out to find this idol in the last days of spring will surely have the most excellent summer of all time. So, we set out to find it. We followed the clues through the forbidden forest, past the lost lake. into the sacred swamps. And finally, along the sunburnt sands. There it is. We've found it. The idol of the innermost limits of pure fun. The bringer of the most righteous summer of all time. The Bamboo Forest, better known among our friends as The Hideaway, our home away from home and favorite secret surf spot. You can surf great waves here all day and never see another soul. It's truly an oasis of stoke. Here's Travis taking off on the first wave of the morning. Here's our friends, Tina and Nate Frog Wheeling. They discovered this place when they were kids and let us in on the secret. Thanks dudes. Nate on a dreamer. Peanut, right behind. A lot's changed in the eight years since our last movie. Marcus went and had a couple of kids. This is Finn and Summer Barton. Girlfriend Caitlin showing Summer some of the finer points of frisbee. Summertime at the hideaway means fun south swell, hot sun, and clear water. Check it out. Marcus trying for a deep barrel on this left. Did he make it? No dice. After a long morning of surfing, nothing beats playing some tunes with the best buddies before we get back out there for the afternoon. Looks like 
It's not just about catching waves. Sometimes watching your friends wipe out is just as fun. We spent all day out there until we were sunburnt, rashed up, and dog tired. Another classic summer day down at the hideaway. These are the kind of days worth living for. Just as it always happens with surfing, when you paddle back out for your last wave of the day, it goes flat. Luckily, our friend Ryan knew of an ancient incantation to sing to Poseidon that is long said to bring one last giant wave to the hideaway. Oh, looks like it worked. Good job, Ryan. Look at that wave on the horizon. It's as big as Everest. Are they surfing it? No fooling. They're gonna die. Well, couldn't ask for a better last wave. You never want to leave a place like the hideaway, but we had a big summer planned, and it was time to get back to our home in Huntington Beach. One of our favorite ways to pass the time when there's no waves is to play the slamming 90s Nintendo game, Thrilla Surfari. Just look at those tubular graphics. Cowabunga! This is the ultimate board riding challenge. Skate down gnarly jungles and bacon deserts and surf down killer volcanoes and Mondo waterfalls. After 30 years of trying, Travis finally beat the game this summer. Congrats, Travis. The best coffee in town is at the Sit Stay Cafe. Cowabunga! So we pulled out the old skateboards and cruised downtown to get a morning cup of our favorite Joe. Sit Stay Cafe, where all the dogs and surfers are welcome. We love this place. Turns out, this was the last summer that the Sit Stay Cafe would be open before they closed down for good. We've had many great memories drinking iced coffee here. We'll miss you guys. There's nothing like a Southern California summer in Huntington Beach. When the sun's out, you head down to the shore for a day at Dog Beach to hang out with all the good puppers.
No family beach day is complete without tossing the old frisbee around. Summer has the sweetest smile we've ever seen. Jessica likes to pet all the good doggos. Fighting the waves seems to be a natural instinct for every young kid. Finn here, taking a bit of a beating, but then coming out on top. Now naturally, once you could beat the waves, you learn how to surf them. The waves were fighting back against Finn here. The thing about surfing is, you have to persist through tons of wipeouts before you get that one ride that hooks you forever. Way to go, Finn. Walking the slack line has become one of our newest passions. People think it's tightrope walking, but it's not. The difference is in the name. Tight rope, slack line. Almost like learning to walk on a rubber band. A forecast of sunshine also calls for a 100% chance of cocktails downtown. Sometimes it seems that maybe the age of exploration is long gone, drifting too far past Lewis and Clark and too far before Captain Kirk. But sometimes, discovery is as simple as looking at your backyard with a new perspective, like this oil rig we decided to go explore. It's a two mile paddle out to this oil rig named Emmy. It can be a long trip, but the private party out there makes it totally worth it. Cheers, Travis. One of our favorite places to slackline is a watering hole hidden deep in the forests of Southern California. We call it Lake Shandy. In addition to totally epic water lines, it's said to be the home of a long lost tribe of savage women, the Ninfo natives of Lake Shandy. Though sightings of the Ninfo natives are extremely rare, men who explore this area alone can often feel a presence lurking and watching them deep in the woods. And we certainly felt like we were being watched. There it is. After a long hike through the woods, the calm waters of Lake Shandy are a welcome sight. It's only 8 a.m. and it's already 100 degrees. And now, it's time to waterline. Just when we started to feel comfortable, we thought we can hear some faint music and dancing deep in the trees. The Ninfo natives of Lake Shandy are said to spend their summer days dancing to the rhythms of the forest. There's a certain thrill about walking on water that brings this childlike joy. What is it about playing in water that makes us all revert back to being a kid again? Uh oh, looks like the savages might be trying to tranquilize us with the blow dart. Good thing they missed.
another miss. Lucky for us, the Nintho natives aren't known for their aim. But a broken clock is right twice a day. We don't remember much after that, but we did wake up sore in some funny places. There's something magical, almost sacred in camping in the mountains, hidden away among a vast sea of pine trees. the sound and smell of the fire at sunset. The campfire is one of our favorite parts of camping, but it's so much more than just s'mores and scary stories. It's the beating heart of the human spirit. This is where all of our ancestors gathered together and dreamed their first dreams. It's a paleolithic experience that we can all still share in. After a night of camping out beneath the stars, Jessica and Michelle spent the next morning teaching Finn and Summer how to fish. Travis's newest hobby is birding. He set a goal to see and identify 100 species of bird this summer. Here's number one. When teaching kids to fish, you often spend more time getting the lion out of the trees than catching anything. Marcus, get down from there. All right, coming. We met this old fisherman who told us of a frigid stream of water just down the trail. A great day to beat the heat, he said. Our first dip in the water. And yup, it was icy all right. Better than a cup of coffee. Finn, you don't need your floaties on. You could stand here. No, Daddy, you're cool. Sure are, bud. Hiking's a lot of work, isn't it, Summer? Travis really got into the feel-good benefits of ice baths and cold showers this year. Wim Hof would be proud. Somewhere between the Chinese horse dance and the Kiwi Haka is a great way to get warm again. Thanks for the great memories, Big Bear. We heard about a great bouldering spot that's said to be the home of a ghost pirate, Captain Trav the Shoeless. The story goes, he sailed his ship alone to find the most primo rock climbing and surfing in all of the seven seas. Until, through the fog, he got shipwrecked on this beach, Pirate's Cove. Legend says, when the fog rolls in, you can still see his ghost climbing and surfing to this day. Well, the fog was in, and it was time to climb some rocks. Climbing on stuff is something we all did when we were kids. It's just so much fun monkeying around on rocks and bringing out your inner priming. The rock here is known to be chossy and sandy, but we loved it all the same.
little slip, but back at it. On low tide, Travis went out to see if the legendary surf spot was breaking. And it was. Dense fog, low tide, peeling rights, and pretty spooky. Just as we were leaving, we could swear we heard the stoked holler of Captain Trav the Shoeless dropping in on one last wave. The story of Captain Trav inspired us to play one of our favorite board games, Merchants and Marauders. Merchants and Marauders is a game where you can choose to live the life of a fearsome pirate or a law-abiding privateer. Now, every time we play, Marcus refuses to be anything but a pirate. And Travis is always a merchant. But, no matter how much he pillages and plunders, Marcus has never won a single game. Attacking on Upgrading to a frigate because I'm making my living as a respectable merchant, not a pirate over here. Moral of the story, kids. This, listen, you can make a lot of money being good. I, I you don't have to steal. After a while, the game reminded us of a certain lost treasure. Hey, you know, I heard a story about an island off the coast of California that looks just like this one. Yeah, I heard about that. Isn't there some like old sunken pirate treasure out there or something like that? Something like that. Something mystical, right? That's what they say. Huh. We should go find it. Yeah, let's go find it. Let's do it. We set out on our favorite sailboat, Lady Diane, to go find the gold. Marcus learned to sail this summer, so the timing was just perfect. The moment you unfurl the jib, raise the main, see it fill up with wind, and feel it pull you through the water is unlike anything you've ever felt. With the wind, nature's fuel, the hidden spots on the map can be explored on a sailboat, adventure is truly out there. Arr, be a sailor, man. There's Michelle, stunning as always, to remind us that mermaids do exist. and Janet paddled out to join us on the adventure. Janet on the jib sheet. No one comes aboard Lady Diane without putting in a little work first. Good job, Janet. It's truly lawless out here. A real pirate's life on the open sea. You sailed upon the ocean for many years. You drank all the rum and you drank all the beer. Hey, oh, hey, 
behind. We take this sweet wrong, then we'll feel alright. And when we make it in the court on the next high time, we'll all be singing hey, oh, hey, I. Yeah. French Polynesia and the Far East battled the mighty Kraken in the Tainan. Sailed through a squall, half a minute all day. Barely lost the night, I got a peg for a living. Eventually, we found what we were looking for. Is this stretch of coastline where the sunken treasure lays? Only one way to find out. The ocean truly is an alien world right here on Earth. And when your BC is inflated just right, you're weightless, like some kind of lucid dreaming astronaut exploring a new, wonderful planet. Down here, it's easy to forget about the billboards, text messages, and urgent emails only 80 feet above. Back up top, the girls had a perfect vantage point to see what may have been a skeleton hidden in a thick kelp. So, Marcus went down to look. It was the remains of an old sailor. And indeed, in his hand, was the gold that we had been looking for. We found it! <laughs> we found it! What? You son of a bitch! <laughs> 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 there are children here, Jessica! Sorry! Now, we didn't Sorry. take all the gold. Just what we needed for an epic summer party the next afternoon. Maybe there's still some left if you know where to look. All right, our friends, the Whelan brothers, told us a little rumor that years ago, they spotted a barn owl nest deep into this canyon out here. So 
We're hiking through. We've been hiking through for a while and we're looking for the barn owl. It's number one on my summer bucket list. Find this bird. Yeah, it's back here. You know, it's like you gotta go back here. All right, barn owl. We're coming for you, baby. All right, looking for this owl, I feel a lot like Indiana Jones right now, right? And it's like Indiana Jones is looking for like the idol of fertility and deep in, deep in the Amazon. And we're looking for this sentient being, this, this bird that almost has this myth surrounding it, deep into this place that human probably hasn't touched in, I don't know how long. I feel like there's dinosaurs back here, to be honest. He's looking right at, we found the barn owl, bro. Woo! Hey, man. Yee. I don't know if he can, there he is. Hey, buddy. What, we came through here and we just found this thing. Oh my God, dude. I feel like we're like in the air. There's one, flew away. That was awesome. Dude, high five, man. We found him, dude. Found dude, that was surreal how he's like staring right at us. And he looked, they look like a ghost, right? Holy, yeah, and to, to work so hard to come here and find it for that moment. Okay, and then he's gone. You can't you be able to see him again. No, he flew up. Damn. He knew we were coming or something, dude. It was, whoa. Oh. That was crazy. And we see this thing just perched up there. We come through this tunnel and then it's like looking at us like this all knowing being. Wow, dude. He gave us a glimpse and said, all right, I'm out. He said, it worked hard enough. Summertime means white hot sand and ice cold beer, backyard barbecues and pumping south swell. And it means afternoon games of wiffle ball. Guys versus girls today in the park. Come on, you turds, let's play some ball. Bear drinking pitchers and trash talking swingers. Hot. Dog griller segment in a stretch singers. Striking out my buddies and hitting big old dingers. Baseball is my favorite sport. It was a tight game and pride was in the line. Just in time for the seventh inning stretch, the ice cream truck shows up. And now, a couple pinch hitters bringing in some much needed RBIs. Come on, you bum! Jessica knocking one out of the park to extend the girl's lead. Pictures and trash talking swingers. Hot dog griller segment in a stretch singers. Striking out my buddies and hitting big old dingers. Baseball is my hey, bada, 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 bada. hey, bada swing! Michelle with that filthy cheese. One, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. It was bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, and two outs. We were down by three and needed a homer to win the game. The pressure was on. Ooh, strike one. Here's the wind up. The pitch. Marcus slams one to deep left field. Is it fair? Oh, just foul, strike two. It all comes down to this. Guys versus girls. Wife versus husband. It was always Marx's dream to get a walk-off home run.
and strike three, girls win. And we never heard the end of it. While the girls were busy celebrating, we were busy stocking up on ammunition. Yup, summertime means a lot of things to a lot of people. But most importantly to us, it means the freedom to act like a kid again. With the gold we found at the bottom of the ocean, we bought a ridiculous amount of burgers, beer, water balloons, and super soakers. And now, it was time for a good old fashioned summertime water fight. Sitting alongside Interstate 15 and overlooking America's favorite highway of adventure, the refreshing oasis that is the all-new Lake Dolores Resort and Rockahoola Water Park. The all-new Rockahoola Water Park offers something for everyone. Get their kicks on one of the many exciting water slides. Relax in the cool flow of the Blue Bayou River. Hidden away in the California desert, there's a water park that used to be bustling with activity, but now is forgotten and abandoned. So, we woke up at 4 a.m. to go search for it. Groggy and caffeinated, we drove down long two-lane highways by cacti and armadillos until we reached Rockahoola Water Park, the once bustling summertime playground. It's surreal walking around a desolate place that holds so many memories for so many people. It's a reminder of the nature of impermanence, that all things come and go. Summer always eventually turns into fall, and nothing is destined to remain the same. And the joy of life is found in relaxing into that fact. This looks like where the kids' pool used to be, but there's still some fun to be had here. The lazy river may be dried up of water, but it's certainly not dried up of stoke today. There's a splendor in knowing that the universe is in constant change. 
We can become less attached to the future and more in tune with enjoying the present moment when we realize that. Now it's not a day at the water park without some chicken tendies from the food stand, an old Barton tradition. We took some time to set up a hammock and relax when Marcus said, this place almost feels like a doorway to another world. And then we saw something strange up on the hill where that big drop off slide used to be. Turns out, it looked like it was a portal to another world. It's full of stars. So, we walk through. I mean, why not? I believe that if we are honest with ourselves, that the most fascinating problem in the world what was this place? We didn't know, but it was radical. Probably the best ride Rockahula has ever had. cosmic water slide taking us, and where was the proverbial swimming pool at the bottom of this ride? We were about to find out. Where are we? I don't know. Some place super sandy. What's that? Looks like there was something on the horizon. We trekked across the hot sand to say hi. It had a gift, it said, that would allow us to surf upon the sands of time itself. A, a sandboard, dudes! It was a scorcher out there, though we had a blast. Travis said, can you believe we're sandboarding in another dimension? No, Travis, I couldn't. Surfing waves is our favorite thing to do. But here, we didn't have to wait for swell. The waves were always pumping. Lots of fun, but there was no ski lifts here. You had to run barefoot up the hot sand. It's not a party without at least one good wipeout. Finn, leaving some hieroglyphs for the locals. sandboarded all day. Whatever a day meant in this strange place. And eventually, we woke up at home with smiles on our faces and sand in our ears. What a ride. Back home, there's some killer rock climbing at Ortega Falls, and we were jonesing for a good climb. We packed up our gear and got an early start to the day. Ortega Falls can get real hot in the summer, so we were stoked to see that the ice cold waterfall was running. What a morning! A climber is only as good as his anchor, because a bad anchor means a big fall, and some big falls means no more climbing. 
Here's Travis getting distracted. That's an awful. Bird number 56 for the summer. Climbing is usually a two-man sport. You have to be able to trust your belay partner. A good relationship is the foundation for courageous climbing. We call this route the Kraken because of the big crack. Testing the gear for the first time. Looks good. Travis's turn. It's kind of cool all the animals you could see on the way up. Lizards, birds, and the occasional spider. Travis looking for the next hold. It's probably the one covered in buckets of chalk. Ortega Falls, ladies and gentlemen. Bruised up, hands ripped apart, and a cold, natural shower to finish the morning. <laughs> we love early morning road trips, great albums from front to back, stops at strange gas stations, and new friends just waiting to be met. We set out towards the far reaches of Northern California in search of surf. First stop, Big Sur. Look at that view. Checking to make sure the forecast skills are on point. Supposed to be some great swell hitting Big Sur today. We made the long trek through a long creek. Another long creek. A small tributary. And finally, a third creek before we found the trail that led us to the beach. We were so excited for the big swell. Oh, it's tiny. It was flat, and I mean flat. But we wanted to paddle out. I mean, Walk out anyway. So after all that, we find this one foot wave. And it's tiny. I think a mouse, it would be a, a small wave for a mouse. Marcus swore he saw some barrels. Going for one here, and no sir. So you! Got skunked. We're on the hunt. We got the good old California surfing book. Be looking at it. Find those waves, baby. We're gonna get some big ones. I know. Coming. Point Reyes. This place for us is where Southern California turns into Northern California. This place is wild. We spent some time looking for surf. Nothing here. And nothing by this boat either. Point Reyes has one of the highest concentrations of large great white sharks in the entire world. See, the sign says so right here. Yep, we finally found some waves, but we both agreed the tide was just a little too high and it was kind of blown out. Nothing to do with sharks at all. the simplicity of cowboy camping. Leave the tent at home, set up your sleeping bag, and enjoy the five billion star hotel. 
Speaking of stars, turn left at Orion as the quintessential explorer's guide to the night sky. We stayed up late that night in our sleeping bags, discovering the wonders of the celestial world. We went to sleep that night feeling like giants. We woke up at 3.30 a.m. to get a head start to our next stop and to try to get a glimpse of a bird that Travis had been looking for all summer. We knew we were at the right place when we arrived at the Autobahn Canyon Ranch. It didn't take Travis long to find something. What? 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 What is it, dude? What is it? That's a, that's a thunderbird. A thunderbird? Where? Where? From one cryptid to the next, now heading for the home of Bigfoot herself. Appropriately, it's a long, strange road into town. Willow Creek was where Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin shot their famous footage in 1967 that allegedly shows a real-life Bigfoot. We are obsessed with this fascinating piece of history, enough to drive out to the place it was filmed, Willow Creek, California, home of the Bigfoot Museum, the Bigfoot Burger, the Bigfoot Motel, and Bigfoot. It's not even close. We're a size 12 and a half. I thought your feet were big. The museum was closed that day, but this nice lady let us in, gave us a private tour, and even told us her own Bigfoot story. I've seen the footprints. Some were out there and I'm brushing snow off the pond. Come here, look at this, look at this. No, I'm not. Nice. Come look at this footprints. She went all the way through the snow, but the edges and the bottom were icy. What does that tell you? Had to be something with heat. Couldn't have been anybody in steel. Couldn't have been anybody in Or a, a fake. Well, we followed those tracks for an hour and they went up a hill that we couldn't get up. An hour? And they went up a hill that we couldn't get up and we climbed the, we used to climb all the wilderness areas. What a story. She told us about a Bigfoot burger down the road. And of course, we had to try it. This is the map of all the local sightings. And there were tons. Can you see Bigfoot on my shirt? Can you find Bigfoot? Nope, there is. See how hard that was to find? You just gotta open your eyes a little bit. Open your eyes, maybe out in the nature. Maybe we'll see one today. The Bigfoot burger was gigantic. It could feed a baby Sasquatch. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Kinda looked like a Bigfoot. <laughs> of course, we stayed at the Bigfoot Motel. Then we went squatching. Patterson Road seemed like a good place to stop. These woods feel dense, massive, and isolated. We felt like there could easily be a Bigfoot around these parts. We found a cool view of the Trinity River. It was kind of a scorcher, so we went to take a dip. We kept wondering if there was any big feet that ever swam around here. We didn't see anything strange but on the way out of town, we couldn't help but keep our eyes peeled. Is that a Sasquatch? Nah, it's just a barrel. That there, that's a Sasquatch. That's just a tree. Huh, huh, Sasquatch! That's just a man. Stopped at a ravine, tried some Bigfoot haulers to lure one out. Whoop! See no Sasquatch today. Got her. 
way up north, just south of Oregon, lays a 26 mile stretch of coastline deemed too rugged for highways, and thereby left mostly undisturbed by modern man. The Lost Coast. We went out to hopefully find some waves, but mainly to get lost for the night. Fun for waves. We drove up the beach. It was pretty flat, but eventually stopped at a place called Dead Man's and were pretty stoked to find a little one-footer rolling in. The water was cold. Travis said he couldn't feel his fingers. This is Becky. She's a farmer in the area. She told us about a spot to camp for the night up in the canyon. The waves weren't great, but they were great if you know what we mean. Sometimes the surf isn't just about the surf. To find lost waves, it's a grand adventure. And this had been one grand adventure. Spending time at the Lost Coast, it's easy to feel free. The local bar recently shut down, so now all the locals gather at the beach, light off fireworks, and throw their own party. The locals were really friendly, and they told us about all of the secret waves just waiting to be ridden up here with no one out. What was once a bucket list trip to check off became something more, and we spent the whole way home talking about coming back to search for those lost waves. Highlining is the ultimate form of slacklining. It's the art of balancing and walking on a one inch wide piece of webbing dozens to hundreds of feet up in the air. But first things first, we gotta make sure the rig is safe. Don't forget to tie into your leash, it could save your life. Slack line in the summertime, walking in the air is not a crime. Getting high, we like to fly. Getting wiggly and feeling fine. Walking the spaces between the places. Sending that line with smiling faces. No, man, it's not a tight rope. It's a slack line that's way more dope. This is our friend Joe. He taught us how to rig high lines. He established this line right here and calls it G-Funk. What a guy and what a slacker. Look at him go. Don't you freak, chill out man, slow down, breathe, it's a head game, it's a head space, you're nowhere else but in this place, take a walk man, we ain't no runners, it's just one foot in front of the other, we like it loose and we like it high, we're gonna slack G-Funk till the day we die. It's cool to think about walking in the air where no human has ever been. When we're highlining, we truly feel like pioneers of the open space. The slack line is like a teacher. It shows us that all of our anxieties are only within ourselves. The line by itself never shakes unless we do. It's a reminder that everything can be in flow again if we only remember to slow down and breathe. This is Ryan. He's a rad slack liner with a killer pirate tattoo. It's always scary getting out on the line first thing in the morning, but after a while, when your buddies are cheering you on, you start to lose that fear and you just can't stop smiling.
Ah, the Kern River. The perfect place for a family getaway to beat the heat in the dog days of summer. The sun was getting hot. The sun was getting hotter. This little dude showed us how to jump in the water on this rope swing. Throwing a bottle of fireball in the river, trying to catch a wild Travis. The Kern is supposed to have some of the clearest nighttime skies. We couldn't wait to try out the new telescope. It's a light bucket. But not before some scary stories from Uncle Travis. And he noticed that a man was following him. And my uncle was scared of the man. And the man, he was scared of my uncle. And he's walking on the trail and he notices the man is still following him. And my uncle is really scared of the man. And the man, He's really scared of my uncle. And they're walking. You just wait till the end. Right? The scary and my uncle noticed that the going. man was still following him. And now at this point, my uncle was extremely scared of the man. <laughs> and the man was extremely scared of my uncle. And the man was... <laughs> <laughs> Not many experiences compare with looking through a big telescope on a warm summer night to hunt for the treasures of space. And the Kern sky offered up a fantastic view. The sounds you're hearing now are from Saturn herself. Just listen to her sweet music and look at that view. It's easy to believe that nature is conscious, and when looking to the oceans of space, it's easy to believe that the cosmos are as well. One of our favorite parts of camping is having coffee in the great outdoors. Nothing like getting the day started with nowhere to be and a hot cup of joe. Rigged up a slack line over the river, but just like a monster trout on the end of a fishing line, it proved to be too wiggly. So we called it monster trout. Summer loves to spin, so relaxing. Finn is turning into quite the rock climber. Look at this send. And summer too. See on Climbing Magazine in a 15 years summer. The kids climbing inspired Marcus to explore some deep water solo in the area. He calls this spot, it came from the river. No ropes needed. If you fall, you land in the water. Marcus with first ascent right here. The girls are getting a little too comfortable for our liking. Time to fish. The current is said to offer up some large trout and is one of California's classic fly fishing spots. Gotta come prepared with all of our flies. Heard about a secret spot said to hold some biters. Finn kept saying it was like a secret level. We were gonna catch a cheap cheap, he said. There's only so much one can do to catch a trout. You can learn about the flies, explore the hidden pools along the banks, and learn the perfect cast. But in the end, the rest is up to the river.
The art of fly fishing is a spiritual practice. It's the art of Zen-like patience and grace. A trip to the Kern isn't complete without heading to Miracle Hot Springs, formerly known as Hobo Hot Springs. Jumping back and forth into this chilly river and the hot bath feels amazing. Everything comes to some kind of an end somewhere. Waves can travel for thousands of miles to break on distant shorelines. Every star we see in the night sky and beyond will eventually turn supernova. And all of our shared experiences will merely become memories to hold for another day. It's so easy to live too much in the past and remember only the good times, and to live too much in the future, worrying about tomorrow. But what if right now, in this present moment, was the good old days? We hope you've enjoyed our film. Thanks for watching. <laughs>